hydrogen to be able to power this rig. Now, before I bring Mike in, let me tell you a little bit more about it. It is powered by a Magnuson supercharged 6.2 liter LS based engine, old school five speed manual transmission. It's got vintage air conditioning and much more. This is a high quality truck by any standard, but what we're going to focus on and talk about is the fact that it is powered with hydrogen. With that, Mike, thank you so much for joining Matt and I on the podcast today. Oh, hi guys. I'm happy to do it. All right. So take us right to the beginning. Where did you first, where did it become on your radar screen? Uh, you're an engineer by trade, a super smart guy, Matt, and I learned that when we met you. Br- bring us into how hydrogen got on your radar screen and why. Well, hydrogen has long been you know, known that it has some, some positives and some negatives, right? So the positives are that when you, uh, when you burn hydrogen, there's no emissions. Uh, the other positive is that there's more element to make hydrogen in the world than anything else. So those are all positives. The negative is it's somewhat limited in, in availability today, although that's changing every single day. So um, that that was really the main negative. There's a uh, you know a misnomer out there. You know the Hindenburg had hydrogen in it, and and a lot of people think that's why it it uh, exploded and crashed. And and anybody that researches it will realize that was not the reason. They coated the outside of a of a cloth balloon and then hit a power line and, uh, and the coating they used, uh, there were eight different chemicals and every one of them was flammable. So they actually caught on fire, a hole ruptured in it. The hydrogen all came out and of course it burns when exposed to flame. But, uh, so there's a lot of misnomer about that, but, uh, you know, looking at all of those things, you know, that, that we knew that we could address, and make a safe system and something that operates. So um, my hydrogen program started actually, uh, so for, I I used to work at GM. I was an engineer at GM. I was uh, at the end, one of the lead engineers in the performance division, building all the one-off stuff. And and throughout my career, I built the first ever. So if there was an idea or a new powertrain or a new anything, a new suspension system, I would uh, engineer those components into some form of vehicle that we could test and develop with. So uh, throughout my GM career, at least for 25 years of that, uh, Bosch was a big supplier to GM, and and I worked with them a lot. Built some really strong relationships with them, and uh, actually this whole hydrogen program started because uh, one of the top guys at Bosch, and, and when I met him 25 years earlier, he was a worker like I was, and uh, we ended up becoming friends, still are. He was retiring. They wanted to have a retirement uh, kind of get-together, and they wanted to come to my shop. I'd worked with a lot of engineers and everything through the year, you know, through the years, and so we all met here at my shop, and, and you know, I showed and did a tour for everybody, and then we were all just sitting around BSing, and the subject of hydrogen came up, and we were talking about it. They had interest and had some experience. I had a lot of interest, and the rest is kind of history. So when did plans get underway for this 48 Chevy, Mike? Um, they they didn't get serious until about a year before, uh, about the, the November before the SEMA where we debuted the truck. So November 2020. Yes. Okay. Yep. And that was when we started, and, you know, obviously this is a new technology, and there's a lot to learn, and uh, so we made some decisions on best practices, and, and uh, you know, I'm a hot rodder, right? So I have been my entire <laughs> life, and uh, so it was a natural for me to, to, you know, I own an engine build company. We went in and made a bunch of decisions, and built the engine with a lot of additional safety uh, features in it, and And from that, I mean to make it stronger and make it hold up because we didn't have a lot of knowledge in exactly what hydrogen would do when we put it in a supercharged V8. Did you run this engine on a dyno or have you done all your testing in the truck itself? Um, All of the testing on this specific engine has been done in the truck. Oh, cool. So we've run engines on the dyno, but they were different configurations and much, much smaller and uh, this is, as far as we know, in anybody, any, even any of the, the big engineering companies, this is the first time 
that we've ever supercharged an engine and put it on hydrogen. So take us into the actual operation of the engine uh, as far as power output, any unique characteristics. Um, It sounds like you beefed up the engine just to be on the safe side to make sure that it was going to be plenty strong. What's it like to drive this thing and operate it? How different is it from uh, gasoline powered? Uh, It drives and, and operates just like gasoline. I mean, the only difference between the two from that standpoint is there's absolutely no smell. Uh-huh. If you stand behind the truck, there's no carbon monoxide, there's no carbon dioxide, there's no hydrocarbons. It has no smell. And when you cold start it, you get just a little bit of, uh, like, water mist that comes out of the tailpipes. Mm-hmm. And once the exhaust comes of temperature, there's nothing. It just it sounds like a, like a gasoline engine. It, uh, it drives like a gasoline engine. Um, I mean, we, you know, we've made great inroads with it and, uh, we're just now running power numbers on it. And, uh, actually, uh, probably tomorrow on Friday, I will, we'll be running a big power test with it. And then I'll be kind of announcing to the world what the numbers are. Oh. We've already far exceeded, uh, anything anybody that's ever tried to do hydrogen before has made for a performance number. So you guys have a lot more dialing in, and like you said, there's a lot more of news coming related to what you guys have already done. When you take a step back and you look at kind of the bigger picture, Mike, what's in store next for the evolution of this technology and the rollout? Well, you know, we've learned a lot, right? We've learned, uh, you know, mixtures, and we've learned engines. We've also learned that a lot of the things that I put into the engine for safety uh, from a standpoint of durability and that kind of stuff aren't necessary. So we've, we've learned that we can run a standard production gasoline engine on hydrogen with virtually no changes to the engine itself. So we have, we've learned that. We've learned we can control engine temperatures with fuel mixtures. We, we've learned a tremendous amount. And, um, you know, to do the to do the conversion, we run a, a tank in the bed of the truck that wasn't in it at SEMA. Uh, my tank was made in uh, Canada, and customs impounded it for five weeks. Oh <laughs> they tried my. to come into the U.S. <laughs> but uh, you know, on a positive side, we could run the engine on uh, welding tanks full of hydrogen. They make specific tanks designed for hydrogen, and we've used those. And uh, so we now have the tank, and it's in the truck, and all that. But um, you know, those were minor inconveniences. Um, the the system uh, runs at 350 bar, so okay. that's the pressure in the tank, which is like 5,074 psi. Uh, we run a you have to run a special tank. Uh, hydrogen is the lightest element known to man. Hmm. So, in a numeric uh, numbering system that they've come up with for for defining gas, the weight of gas of a gas is the state. Um, hydrogen is a number two. There, there is not a number one, but they left a space just in case we ever find anything lighter. Uh, the air around us that we breathe is a 34. So that defines the kind of the, how light hydrogen is in relationship to air. So, um, that, that being the case, it's, uh, if you release hydrogen, it's going straight to the sky. You can't, you know, if it's released, you can't stop it, right? You can shut it off and keep it from going, but that's it. It's also very, very small molecules that make it up. So it will permeate through, uh, like, for instance, a standard stainless steel fuel line that we would use in a hot rod. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you put hydrogen in that line, it will escape through the line. Wow. Actually through the stainless. So our tank is specifically designed to hold hydrogen. Uh, our tank is DOT certified. We use uh, electronic control valves on the ends that we control with the ECM for turning the hydrogen off and on. We have special uh, lines, uh, a military uh, spec that was designed for uh, uh, some certain military applications. So they will not permeate. Uh, we regulate the uh, hydrogen pressure down to about 8 bar, which is like 115 PSI at the fuel rail. We run uh, currently 16 fuel injectors. We run eight in the traditional location. Uh-huh. And then we machined an adapter that goes between the intercooler lid and the supercharger and added eight more there. And we do that because 
the only all the parts that are out there right now for this are experimental, and they were never designed for a six two V eight. They were designed for like a one point three liter three cylinder engine, and so to get the volume we needed, we had to, to run sixteen of them. So um, that's the basics of the of the system. We have a specific computer that that Bosch manufactures. We operate in thresholds uh, that that traditional uh, gasoline engines do not operate in. As an example, a uh, traditional gasoline engine, the kind of accepted best performance number in a naturally aspirated state is 14.7 to 1 fuel ratio. Right. So that's 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. Uh, our system operates in the 75 to 1 fuel range to 100 to 1. So we have to rewrite software and open parameters and do a lot of those things in, in the computer. And because Bosch owns it, they have access to all that. So it was okay. very easy to do that. So, But um, that's kind of the, the story behind the components and how they function. Based on based on the work that you've done, Mike, where do you see this playing out? Do you see widespread adoption of this technology? Will it be more isolated for kind of special projects, or do you see it becoming very mainstream? Well, you know, we're in the process. We'll very shortly here and in, in within the next four weeks or less, we will be running uh, emission tests for CARB. So we're running those uh, at, here in here in Michigan. Uh, Mall has a full emission test facility here, and we're going there to run the the, the truck. And we're working with CARB, and, and our goal is to have a zero emission certification. So um, we know that's what it puts out. The only output is is water out the tailpipes, and, and a very minimal amount of that. So so we know that's the case. Once I get that that certification, our goal is to take this uh, as a conversion package. So we want to be able to retrofit, and we can retrofit, uh, any four-stroke internal combustion gasoline engine to run on hydrogen. Our system will function on a weed whacker, a generator, a boat motor, a uh, you know anything, right? So lawnmowers could run on hydrogen. Any and all of it can. So this is a path to zero emission. All right. Okay. All right. People so are our saying goal is retrofit kit. Listeners are going to say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Toyota Hyundai both currently have offered or have offered in the past hydrogen powered vehicles. This is not cutting edge, but help us a minute understand the radical and complete difference. My understanding with the current production, there's only a few, as I mentioned, uh, hydrogen powered vehicles are not internal combustion. The hydrogen gets converted to electricity and runs electric motors. Is that a correct statement? That is absolutely correct. So okay. the, most of the vehicles that are out there today um, and you're right, Honda, Hun, uh, you know, they, a couple of Toyota builds one, Hyundai builds one, right. uh, Nissan has one. Oh, okay. Um, they're in very limited availability, but they are fuel cell vehicles. Uh, in a fuel cell, there's a, a membrane inside the cell. You inject hydrogen into it. You burn the hydrogen inside the fuel cell. As it travels through this membrane, it generates electricity. And then that electricity is then stored in a battery pack and used to, to drive wheel motors, electric wheel motors. In our case, uh, and, and that system is also very popular in a number of buses, right, in some commercial vehicles where they put a fuel cell in and electric motors. In our case, we physically inject the hydrogen into the port. It travels through the valve into the combustion chamber. <laughs> it's compressed, lit with a traditional spark plug, traditional coil, traditional coil wire, and we ignite it just like you do gasoline, and then we travel it out the exhaust valve into the port and out the exhaust. Incredible. So same, same hydrogen can be used in both, and, but the process by which we extract the energy is different. Now, Hydrogen, one of the things that people ask about is, is, you know, hydrogen, how do you produce it? And there are basically three ways that hydrogen is produced today. So the traditional way, which is considered somewhat dirty because it takes 
electricity and other things to do it. It has a carbon footprint. Okay. There is today what we call blue hydrogen. Blue hydrogen is manufactured with a much, much reduced carbon footprint. It uses some energy, solar energies and things like that to produce it. It can be created, as I say, with a very, very small carbon footprint. There's also green hydrogen that's available today. Green hydrogen is manufactured with zero carbon footprint. Okay? Wow. So it can be uh, manufactured. They use solar. They use wind. They use some other things to get the electricity part. But then it's, it's the process is different by which it's manufactured. Fuel cell vehicles require a very clean hydrogen to, to operate properly. We don't require the same level, but mm. that's mm. what's commercially available. Okay. okay. So we can use any of those processes, hydrogen manufactured in them. In the, in the case of green hydrogen, we use, take hydrogen that's manufactured with zero carbon footprint. We put it in our vehicle. We create, we extract the energy, create transportation with zero carbon footprint. There's no battery. The only battery in the truck is I have an Optima that starts it. Other than that, we don't use electric wheel motors. We don't use battery to, to drive anything, none of that. So we have a, a completely from start to finish providing transportation, which is 100% without a carbon footprint. Impressive. Uh, current cost, that's probably going to change going forward, but current cost of hydrogen compared to gasoline. So if I use pre-war uh, numbers in California, because <laughs> California is the only state where hydrogen is commercially sold in a pump, where you just drive up to the pump and fill your vehicle. Okay. There are stations, and I have one here in Michigan, but they're not just general public stations, okay? So I'll use California's numbers. Uh, pre this, this latest war thing we have, uh, 87 octane gasoline in California was about... Five dollars a gallon. Okay. If I do the hydrogen, we buy in, by the kilogram, and that's how we use it. But if I do the conversion kilogram to gasoline, and use the current number that was in California, uh, hydrogen is about three fifty a gallon. Interesting. So it's about a third less. The other interesting thing about hydrogen is, uh, in some of the stations, there are, there were when I debuted the truck, there were like fifty hydrogen public filling stations in California. Okay. They're in process uh, to have in the next 18 to 24 months, 200 plus wow. in California. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Hydrogen can be manufactured on site. You don't have to manufacture it in a big facility oh. somewhere and then transport it. You can manufacture hydrogen, pulling air in and subtracting the moisture from the air and create hydrogen with it. So the gas station could, I'm using the word refine, maybe not the right word, but they can they can generate hydrogen on site. That's what you're saying? Yes, and, and some of them in California do already. The one facility that we have near me here in Michigan, uh, that's how they do it. They, they just use uh, uh, the moisture from the air and then generate hydrogen from that. Hmm. Wow. So, Mike, it's clear you are far from done with this initial truck. You mentioned you've got testing in the works. You've got lots of other development work happening. I think what I'm wondering is any other vehicle projects in the work, and maybe more importantly, when will people get a chance to see them? Well, um, we are working on our SEMA uh, 2022 build, and it is uh, it will again be hydrogen-powered, but it will be an, another advanced step in hydrogen. In, in where we go and what we do. Um, if everything stays on track and, and where we're going, the goal is to debut this new vehicle there. It'll be in the uh, Redline oil booth, just okay. like my last truck was. Yep. Uh, there, If you don't know, Redline's owned by Philip 66. So Philip 66 has a huge interest in hydrogen. They're in the process of putting... Hydrogen is more popular in other countries than it is necessarily in the United States. So, but, but Philip 66 is in the process of building 150 approximately hydrogen filling stations across Europe. 